Hello. This video is one of a series of lectures for the distance education course entitled Woody Landscape Plants, a component of the Prairie Horticulture Certificate Program. In this video, we will explore some of the main characteristics used in plant identification using the CD-ROM Woody Plants in the Prairie Landscape. When you go to the main screen in this program, you will find several buttons across the top. Fairly simple design. Most of these buttons over here on the left are used to access information on individual plants. But there is a section under the acorn button on woody plant characteristics that are useful gen generally for understanding how plants are identified and how you can build keys to identify plants. So if you go there, you'll see there's information on uh, woody plant shoots, foliage, reproductive structures, and bark, and so on. We'll just take a look at a few of these key areas. When it comes to woody plant shoots, one thing that we can look at is the whole notion of buds and their location. These are what we call a terminal bud at the tip of a, of a shoot. You'll see that referred to sometime. Or a lateral bud or axillary bud, which occurs further down the, the stem. So you, you have to be able to, to know the difference. Let's take a look at foliage characteristics now. We've got uh, angiosperms and gymnosperms. With respect to angiosperm leaves, which are uh, common uh, broadleaf woody plants in the northern climates and then often deciduous, there are two major types of, of leaves that we can look at, the so-called simple leaf and the compound leaf. Now a simple leaf is one, like the name might imply, it's got a single blade, a petiole, and a bud in the axle where the leaf attaches to the stem, which helps to tell you that it's a, it's a whole leaf and not a part of a leaf. Compound leaf, on the other hand, is uh, formed from a, a single stalk, but a whole bunch of subcomponents called leaflets that are attached to this stalk. So this whole thing is a leaf here, attached to the stem here. There is an axillary bud at, at this junction, but there are not axillary buds in the axles of the leaflets. So that helps to distinguish that these are leaflets, not leaf, actual leaves. This is a pinnately compound leaf, which is sort of like as its leaflets arranged like the uh, like a feather, whereas palmately uh, compound leaves, all the leaflets attached to a single spot, something like the fingers attached into the palm of your hand, hence the name. <coughs> now there are several <coughs> shapes when it comes to leaf, say simple leaves. The first one that I showed already is sort of almost round, sometimes it's called orbicular, orbicular rather, and another one is. A very common shape is what's called ovate, which is where the broadest part is below the middle of the leaf and then it goes to a point up near the tip. That's a common one. Lanceolate is somewhat similar, but it's quite a bit narrower and, uh, than, the one, than the ovate. Cor and you can see that these kind of run into each other a little bit. Chordate's something like an, an ovate, only it's got a definite heart shape to it because the base cuts in like this where it attaches to the petiole, so it has a real heart, classic heart shape. You can also look at another one called obovate, for example, where you have the, the, the widest part is above the middle rather than below, like an ovate. So that's what obovate, like opposite ovate almost, is what it means. And just another one is linear, where it's very long and narrow. And there are other ones in between. Another important thing we have to remember when it comes to leaves is the how they're arranged on the stem. That's one of the first things you look at when you're either building a key or looking at a key. You have two major types. One is the alternate arrangement, whereby the leaf attachment is kind of alternating with each other here and then going up here like this, like this, all the way up the stem. Conversely, uh, this is um, as opposed to what are called opposite arrangements, where the leaves are opposite each other at a node. So you have one leaf on this side, and one leaf on this side. They're exactly opposite each other. They do not alternate all the way up the stem. There are other things you can look at with respect to leaves as well. And I, do, I won't spend a lot of time on them, but the, the edges are really important when it comes to identification. But we have what's called an entire margin. That's called the, the leaf edge or margin is what we're talking about when we talk about these things. So we have an entire margin, or we might have a serrated margin where it's sort of toothed. And you can even get more 
variations on serrations where you get doubly serrate, where you've got big teeth, and then inside the on the on the big tooth is other little teeth. So it's called doubly serrate. And there's one called crenate, where you just have sort of rounded teeth. So they're kind of quite a bit different. So, but again, these kind of group gradate into each other to some extent. You can also get kinds of lobing of leaves, pinnately lobed, where the lobes come off all the way along the, the central vein, or as opposed to palmately lobed, something like you see a lot of times in the maples, where you have, you know, again, the lobes not coming off all along, uh, along the sides, but they come out more uh, like the palm of a hand. And you can look at, there's differences in the leaf base as well, and I'm not going to go into that, but you can see that there's the chordate that I mentioned already, so there's ways of looking at it, and of course there's the leaf tip as well, you get really long drawn out tips, uh, not so much pointed, but not so much, you can even get them, you know, rounded, you know, rounded tips, so there's quite a bit of variation, so leaves are quite important. We also have uh, the leaves of, of the gymnosperms, and here we're just talking mainly three types of leaves. We've got what are called scale-like, just these are the individual scale leaves here. And you've got what are called all-like, where they have fairly wide bases, but then they come out to a point. And somewhat similar, but a little bit more regular all the way along are the needle-like leaves, which were classical leaves of spruces and firs and that sort of thing, so we, we all relate to these. And you'll notice that these are all attached singly along the stem, as opposed to what you will find when you go to, say, a pine, where you'll get clusters or groupings of needles that come off the stem. And, taking a look briefly at, there is a section here on, on flowers, uh, things like you know whether they're all they get all the parts of the flower in one flower called a perfect flower and you, whether that's the kind of flowers are on a plant or you might get a situation where you might have male flowers on one plant and female flowers on another that happens for example in green ash or you might have some male flowers on the plant and other, and other parts of the plant will have female flowers but they're still separate so you have variations in the, in the flowers. And I think that that pretty well covers what you need to know, except for maybe fruit. There are different kinds of fruit types. You can get the, the fleshy berry type, and you can get um, things like capsules, and pods, such as when you see in Caragana, or like a pea pod, or you get these really dry, what are called sumeras, in, in your um, things like your maples and your ashes. So you get different kinds of fruit, and they can also be really useful characteristics for identifying and also for building a key. So hopefully these kinds of things will be useful. I do direct you then to the, um, the, the plant material section on uh, the angel site that c comes with the course. There's a long description of all the plants, but there's also quite a description. There's a whole chapter describing a lot of these characteristics. It's a lot of it's been derived from Michael Durr's book, and so uh, I advise you to go and study that, and if you happen to have the CD, you can use that, but once you know all these characteristics, it'll be quite useful because you will be required to both key out some plants and build a key in this course, and so once you know the characteristics, then it's much easier, and then once you know them and you look at a plant, you can start looking up and, and start cataloging the various characteristics. So that is the uh, end of this section, so the next video will be starting to look at the whole idea of building a key.